Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jan Pichl and uh, I would like to speak about Alquist, which is our conversational artificial intelligence uh, with uh, which we competed in the uh, two years of Alexa Prize and we are still competing uh, this year. But uh, at the beginning let me briefly introduce uh, our university. Uh, as you already heard, uh, I'm from Czech Technical University in Prague. I'm from the Czech Institute of Informatics, Robotics and Kybernetics, uh, where our, uh, my supervisor started the group called eClub. And uh, all, all the time the group became uh, focused on uh, natural language processing. Um, mainly, and we have several PhD students and uh, full-time employees, also some bachelor students uh, which are studying computer sciences. And uh, our main focus is uh, on conversational AI, uh, basically uh, because of the Alexa Price competition, because it takes a lot of time to uh, develop some kind of system. But we also we also focus in uh, on question answering and, and other related NLP problems. So the point uh, of this slide is, is to, if you if you want to join our team, we would be really we will be really glad to welcome new students. And uh, here you can see the extended team uh, of uh, Alexa Prize. Some of, some of them, uh, some of us are still competing. Some of uh, some of us are uh, not competing anymore. But let me let me switch to uh, conversational uh, AI topic. Uh, I would like to start with the motivation here, uh, why, why we are doing what we are doing and why, does, uh, why do the big companies uh, supporting uh, students' teams like, uh, like us. And uh, the main trigger of the conversational AI is the progress in the speech recognition. As you can see in uh, this, I guess, uh, today obsolete graph, uh, that. Uh, the word accuracy of speech recognition uh, uh, reached the level of the human speech recognition, and this is this is the point uh, where the voice assistant really means something, and they they can be they can be used, and they can they can they can understand you uh, with uh, some reasonable reasonable error, and the companies are aware of that, and uh, first of them was the Amazon. And Amazon started to shipping his uh, Alexa Echo device, and uh, a lot of people, especially in uh, in US, has one device at home. I don't know uh, about the acceptance of Alexa devices in uh, in Germany, but uh, in Czech Republic it's a little bit tricky because uh, Alexa doesn't support Czech language. So basically, you need to speak uh, to it uh, only in English and. Uh, especially older people uh, don't know how to speak in English, so, so it's a problem for them. But this is uh, this is not main problem of the of the device. Uh, the problem is that the new customers or uh, on our speaker or users of those speakers don't know what to do uh, with this with these assistants. And uh, I can I, I can totally agree because. Uh, Despite I'm the developer of uh, voice applications, uh, I don't know either what to do with them. I, <laughs> I only use them for like uh, playing music or, or uh, uh, turning on lights or some, some s simple stuff like that. And those companies are aware of, that use of these use cases. So basically you can see the, uh, the ratio here on this graph. Uh, how people how people are using uh, these devices? As I said, the playing music is the is the winner here, and uh, this is uh, this is not something those companies want. Especially Amazon, uh, one of the big um, maybe the biggest the biggest e-shop uh, in the world, wants to focus on the on the last column, which is the shopping. So how to convince uh, the Alexa users to use Alexa to shop or to buy something? And uh, they they want to they want to uh, persuade people to use the devices more. So basically, they want to sp uh, they want people to spend more time talking to devices, and that's why they they come up with the Alexa Price competition because they wanted uh, some uh, long-term conversation with Alexa, and uh, they want to switch people from from simple commands to, to longer conversations. So 
they came up with Alexa Price and basically the goal uh, of this competition is to create a social bot and the definition of the social bot is uh, it is something that uh, you can have uh, coherent and engaging conversation with and this is uh, something which can uh, hopefully uh, make the people to accept Alexa as a I guess uh, some part of their family and they they can they can use it more and uh, eventually they will be they will be willing to use it for shopping so uh, there is a long part for uh, path for uh, for this goal but uh, the beginning of this path is to create uh, some meaningful conversation and uh, they decided to use uh, teams from all around the world uh, to accomplish that uh, Basically, uh, the competition starts with uh, some kind of kind of application period, where each uh, each university can submit uh, uh, application with the technic uh, technical approach and vision and parts uh, like that. Basically, few few papers uh, uh, you need to submit few papers based on that uh, that uh, the Amazon will decide who will compete and who will not. And here you can see uh, eight of the competitors uh, during the last year of the of the Alexa Prize competition. The last year they selected uh, eight teams. This year uh, there are ten teams competing, five teams returning from previous year, and five new teams. Uh, as the competition uh, goes. Uh, so you are eventually uh, eventually allowed to talk to uh, real customers, and uh, this is where the real fun starts, uh, because you are you are evaluated by by a huge amount of people, and the uh, bot is rated for on the scale from one to five stars, and based on that you you can progress to semifinals, uh, where you can see uh, those three teams were selected uh, to the semifinals last year, and. If you are in the semifinals, uh, then you are not uh, being evaluated by uh, real customers. You are evaluated by uh, uh, by judges and interactors. You have a set of three judges and three interactors, and the interactors actually interact with your bot, and the judges just listen listen to them, and they they give the final score. And based on the score, uh, the winner is selected. And the winner last year was the UC Davis. We were on the second place, and uh, because there are only six uh, final conversations uh, to evaluate the winner or to decide who who will win, uh, it is really it is really tri tricky, and uh, uh, it, uh, there is a huge uh, space for some kind of errors, uh, and if you. If you have some probability of some uh, some error, uh, I can I can guarantee you that uh, it will happen in during the finals, because what could uh, what could have gone wrong during finals, I I believe it it went wrong <laughs> in our bot, but uh, finally we ended up on a second place, which is uh, I guess a really a really great accomplishment. And uh, th this is uh, one screenshot from uh, or one shot from finals. This is one of the interactors. Uh, talking to one of the three bots, and uh, the judges are hidden somewhere uh, in the backstage, and they they just listening the conversation in their headphones. Oh, and this is <laughs> this is our team holding the check for the second second place. But uh, we were wondering uh, why was Alquist successful and why uh, which was the point uh, of. Uh, of being on the second place, and we identified three main criteria which uh, we believe uh, helped us uh, to to success. And one thing is uh, use to use wide range of topics. We we designed this uh, this kind of graph. We call, we call it a topic graph, where you have some kind of hierarchy of topics. And those topics are identified based on the previous conversations from the first year uh, of the Alexa Prize. And the key point is to identify what the users want to talk about uh, the most. 
which are which are the movies, so <laughs> movies and sports, and you need to uh, you need to focus uh, focus on those topics uh, the most, and uh, obviously you need to you need to cover another another topics, and uh, the the crucial part is to be able in some way uh, be uh, to be able to respond on on topics you didn't prepare or topics uh, you didn't expect to be uh, to be discussed uh, in your in your application so the uh, i believe i will uh, i will be talking about it uh, on one of the upcoming slides but the generic the generic note uh, in the middle this is the point where where the conversation went uh, about some uh, unexpected stuff uh, will happen and basically it is uh, to uh, you need to just find some relevant information on the internet and and use it uh, as uh, as your own opinion or as your own information and offer it to 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 the users the, se the second thing is to incorporate uh, knowledge from from databases because uh, if the if the conversation was uh, just some kind of chit chat, it would not be engaging enough for the users, and so they are basically want to talk about uh, movies which are in cinema right now or sports match results and stuff like that. And uh, those are the those are the information you cannot find in the generic databases like Wikidata. So you need to combine the knowledge from various types of sources to cover the uh, up-to-date uh, events and up-to-date uh, information and being able to to offer them uh, to the users. And the last but not least uh, point of success is the personality and the personalization uh, of your bot. One of the disclaimer uh, of this uh, conversational assistance is that uh, the technology is not uh, far enough to produce uh, own sentences only in some limited limited way so basically a huge part of the uh, of the natural language generation part consists of templates and the, inf the information from the internet so basically you need to take care of uh, uh, of joining those pieces of information into into a personality which is uh, which is uh, like a, I, I would say persistent uh, from from the beginning to the end of the system, and uh, you basically, if you if you have a big team, then there are several people working uh, on those on those dialogues, and you don't you don't want uh, them to uh, to put uh, different personality to different part of the bots. The, so this is uh, this is really uh, this is really important for us to cooperate on on unified personality, which will be which will be well suited for the users. Uh, and the next level would be uh, to select uh, some kind of personalities, uh, different personality for different type of pers uh, different type of people, so we, which is something we did not uh, we, we did not do because it is really uh, really difficult to identify the the nature of the uh, of the person and based on that you present them different personality but it would uh, i believe uh, it would increase our rating as well okay uh, here is a demo time and uh, wish me luck because there is always problem with the connection <laughs> alexa open our quest hi this is an Alexa Prize social bot. I think I have already heard your voice. Have we talked before? Yes, we have. So what's your name, my friend? My name is John. I'm glad you came back. John, um, how is it going? Yeah, it's fine, thank you. Ooh la la, that's a very fine answer. Okay, you like music, right? Do you want to talk about it? Yes, of course. Uh-oh. I swear I was listening carefully, but now I'm completely lost. So what Alexa, do you want to talk about now? Let's talk about movies. I was wondering, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Harry Potter. 
Ah, your favorite movie is Harry Potter. Oh, I see. As for me, I love Star Wars. Hopefully, the ninth episode will be really good. So I heard this interesting idea about movies, shows, or movies taking place in a small town, where nothing happens often have the most unrealistic big things happen. What do your brain cells say to that? Yeah, it's interesting, but tell me about traveling. Have you ever been abroad? If so, could you tell me where you have been? I'm abroad right now. Oh, you're about right now. If you want to stop me, just say, stop. Let's keep having this great coherent and engaging conversation. John, <laughs> let me ask you. Let's target our memories. Do you remember everything like a computer, or do you forget a lot? <laughs> I forget a lot. Do you cherish a strong memory of something important in your life? Tell me about it. I don't want to tell you about it. Have you ever thought about what it Alexa, would be like to remember? Sing me a song. Um, I can sing to you, but I must warn you, John, not everyone likes it. Do you still want me to try it? Yes. As you wish. Sing along with me. I'm sure you know it. Give me, give me, give me a man after midnight. <laughs> Won't somebody help me chase the shot out away? Give me, give me, give me a man after midnight. Take me through the darkness to the break of the day. Ta-da! That's it. Fantastic. I know more melodies. Wanna hear another one? Yes. Let's sing together once more. And I was like, baby, 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 ooh. Like, baby, 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 no. Like, baby, 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 ooh. I thought you'd always be mine, mine. Ta-da! That's it. Breathtaking. I know more melodies. Wanna hear another one? Please don't. <laughs> Uh-oh. I swear Alexa, I was listening carefully. Stop. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, those kind of tricks like the singing, uh, is this, 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 this is the really most important part uh, in terms of the uh, user rating. Because if you, if you improve your machine learning models to about like 5%, the users will never know. But if you add some new song, they will know and <laughs> they will give you they will give you better better rating yeah, so this is a backup video we didn't have to use and uh, let's talk about the technology behind alquist first of all uh, if you start developing a system like that you need to uh, ask yourself a few questions of course uh, there are a lot of questions related to machine learning, uh, which models you want to use, and what is the combination of manual work and what is uh, manual work and uh, machine learning stuff uh, included in your system. But because it's a competition where you are evaluated by a huge amount of people, you need to uh, consider some kind of uh, software engineering related uh, stuff like. How to how to handle how to handle big traffic, uh, how to make it stable, and uh, because you want to improve your bot uh, during the course of the competition, you need to make it some kind of model to easily switch models when you when you are ready to uh, improve one of the subtasks, because. Uh, when we first started uh, competing in the Alexa Prize, we, we just believed that we can make it using uh, some kind of end-to-end -end, uh, model where we gather some information from the internet and conversations from the internet. And then we, we wanted to uh, train a neural network which will be able to just reproduce those conversations. And we were not the only team who believed in that approach at the beginning. But uh, this is not uh, the approach you should try in this, in this task because uh, you end up with something like uh, very, gen something like gen very generic uh, responses like, 
uh, I don't know or I love you because they are suitable for uh, like uh, a lot of uh, a lot of messages. So what can what can say I love you to to every message and it uh, it could be coherent but not engaging. So basically, uh, we we needed to switch our approach to something modular, and uh, you, we needed to identify the subtasks which uh, which are worth to focusing on because they are necessary uh, in the pipeline of the processing of this uh, of the user message and generating the response. And basically, this is the very uh, very simple very simple uh, flow of the information. Uh, uh, you, you may know it. Uh, it starts with uh, Alexa device, and Alexa device uh, offers you with their uh, not the Alexa device itself, but the Alexa cloud offers you with the speech recognition and text to speech. So you don't need to handle those part of the system. Basically, you start with uh, with the text, and you are responding with the text as well, and Alexa will handle handle the rest. But uh, the fun, uh, this is not the only fun part. The, I believe the more, more fun is in the actual NLP where you, you need to process uh, those utterances. And let me focus uh, just a little bit on the context uh, here. I, uh, those two boxes with load context and safe context. Because uh, you, you want to work with the context because uh, the actual utterances uh, themselves does not contain uh, all the information. Uh, people usually usually say something like uh, very short utterances. Uh, we uh, we discovered that the 80% of all utterances are less uh, are shorter than five words. So basically, uh, you need to, you don't you are not able to uh, get all the information from single single message you need to uh, you need to work with a whole window of the conversation and based on that you are able to drive the conversation in a way the user uh, wants it to drive uh, and uh, discover the the topics the user want to discuss and uh, stuff like that this is something you are uh, you are doing in the natural language understanding part which I will talk about later. Uh, you identify the core core aspects of the message, and then based on that, you can you can drive the dialogue uh, using switching uh, switching topics or uh, driving the dialogue using dialogue manager. And as I said at the beginning, uh, it is it is really important to incorporate some external knowledge about. Uh, 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 about the current events and uh, stuff like that. So uh, basically, at the beginning, uh, you receive a message from the user, and uh, then, mm, based on the information stored in context and based on the plain text message uh, you just received, you need to identify uh, a few things from uh, from that utterance, and. Uh, Something which is which is really common for uh, all all the uh, dialogue systems, even for the goal-oriented dialogue systems, is that you want to you want to recognize the intent where uh, you 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 are able to say that the user want to talk about, for example, for example, the news, and uh, if uh, if there is some entity like uh, in the sentence I like Hunger Games, you want to dis uh, recognize it as well. Uh, because then you need to map it to your database and uh, then you are able to talk about it uh, more. Those are uh, basic basic components uh, and some additional stuff is uh, for example mm, to recognize uh, punctuation in the sentences because uh, I said that the users usually says only uh, uh, only five words, but uh, there are there are some users which uh, really want to talk, and they are they are saying longer sentences, and this uh, really applies for the for the interactors during the finals. They are like uh, sentences uh, to to twenty and more words. Uh, it is not problem for them, and uh, this is usually it's not it is something you are not prepared because you you haven't haven't seen utterances like that uh, from the users of the Alexa, but the interactors are different. So 
uh, if, the, if the sentence is long, you need to you need to split it uh, into a few parts, and then uh, you you want to handle each part of the sentence separately, because uh, uh, people people can say something like I don't want to talk about music, let's chat about movies, and and you need to focus on the last part of the of the sentence and uh, and recognize the. In uh, the entity in the last part, because because you don't really care about uh, that uh, the user don't want to talk about something. You you only want to focus about the about the actual thing he wants to talk about right now. And uh, since the intent detection is uh, really the same like uh, for the other dialog systems, we have also. Uh, we are limited with the uh, strict, uh, or not, not not strict, but the uh, fixed size of the uh, of the labels. We are able to we are able to recognize. So uh, basically, basically the trick is uh, to um, to make the labels in a way that uh, they are not so specific. So they are they are uh, you you are able to cover wide range of topics and. Uh, the small differences between what user actually want to talk about, you can uh, you can decide based on the based on the combination of the intent and the entity, no, not the it intent itself. And uh, another another task which is uh, uh, some kind of same same like the intent detection because it's also a classification of the incoming message. Is a dialog act detection where we want to tell whether it is a statement, uh, acknowledgement, uh, appreciation, yes, no, or some some uh, another type of the sentence. As you can see on this graph, uh, most of the utterances are statements, and uh, maybe it is because uh, the bot usually uh, asks questions, so the users are. Forced to forced to reply. So basically, this is this is why the statement is uh, most common category. But uh, but users uh, users usually uh, ask question as well, and then you need to then you need to process it uh, in a different way way than uh, than the statement. So basically, now you have you have two information. You have <coughs> intent and you have dialog X. And uh, as I said, uh, you need to uh, recognize the entity uh, where uh, where the where the tricky part is uh, uh, really on. A, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's really tricky when when the when the entities are not specific uh, specific enough because, uh, for example. People say I like Harry Potter, and you you don't know whether whether they are talking about the book uh, or about the whole series or about the movie. So mm, you you have two options. You need to you need to uh, work with your context because if you are currently discussing movies and they they say that they like Harry Potter, uh, then you know they are uh, you, you can be sure that uh, they are talking about a Harry Potter movie. But uh, if it's this sentence is in some kind of uh, context of different different topic, it's not in the book topic or, or movie topic. You need to you need to ask a user uh, to clarify whether he or she meant the movie or the book, and this is uh, which something which is called entity disambiguation. And uh, if you if you know the category, if you know the entity, you are able to map it uh, to some kind of database. And uh, if you have your entity mapped to your database, you can you can easily uh, find the attributes uh, of the entity, and you are able you are able to talk about uh, them. This is something which is focus of, of the current Alexa Prize. They are uh, they are pushing the teams into using. Uh, into using knowledge knowledge grounded dialogues, and they uh, Amazon released uh, publicly released data set where you have uh, like ten thousand of conversations uh, with some kind of uh, Wikipedia articles, uh, Washington Post articles, and fun facts from Reddit. And uh, this this data set was uh, constructed using uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, 
uh, people, and they were they were provided uh, they were provided with the with the information from Wikipedia and Reddit and stuff like that, and they were told to have a conversation uh, about uh, about that. So uh, basically, this is a message from Amazon. Use the use the knowledge, uh, use the knowledge from the internet, and make the dialogue uh, from the knowledge because this is something the people want to talk about. Uh, so this is something I said because uh, to to highlight why the why the entity recognition and the entity disambiguation is really important uh, here. Yeah, and once you have once you have your entity identified mapped to your database uh, you can you can use various sources uh, to to retrieve your information uh, a lot of sources make it easier for you uh, to connect with the other ones because they have uh, they have some uh, linkage between themselves so uh, you can you can easily join them and use them use them all to, to cover a wide range of uh, knowledge. Yeah, this is, the, this is the most fun part about the uh, whole Alexa price. And uh, because you are talking to real users, you need to, you need to filter your responses. And uh, because the, the basic approach is to include some blacklist of words, then uh, you, can, you can easily filter out some uh, profane words, but there are, there are some, some tricky, uh, tricky questions or tricky messages where you cannot easily identify it as a, as a bad statement or offending statement because mm, every single word itself is it's, it's okay, but the message, message uh, as a whole is not okay. Uh, the, the first... Uh, uh, the first example, kill your first defense, is something which happened to our bot, uh, and it was something with, which we which we find on Reddit, I, I guess, uh, and uh, we just presented to to the user, and it, that was really uh, that was a real problem for Amazon. We were like uh, one for one week uh, shut it down, and uh, uh, I had to apologize uh, several times and uh, swear that uh, this is not uh, we. Uh, this is something which we not added intentionally to our bot, and this is some information from the internet. So, <laughs> based on that, we included the word "kill" into list of the profane words as well. Uh, uh, and another example is. Uh, because you, you cannot tell who, who talks to your bot and uh, the, user, the users could be children. So if you, if you uh, say Santa is dead to a child, it is, it is bad as well because <laughs> they are full of hope and, uh, and then you, you ruin their life. So this is something which happened to another bot and it was, it was a real problem too. Okay, I, I was talking about uh, about the first part of the processing of the message when we when we extracted uh, the information from it, and now it's time to uh, teach the bot uh, how to talk. And the first example which came to my to our mind uh, is well. Uh, you can you can have a rule based chatbot because you can uh, it's uh, it's easy it's easy to come up with this idea but it is not suitable for uh, like it is not suitable for everything i said uh, it, because there are various kind of responses you you can say and there are various kind of messages you can expect so you are not uh, able to uh, to list off all the possibilities uh, you 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 are expecting uh, Despite that, this is the uh, this is the case how how most of the Alexa, Siri, and Google Home thing works because they have the army of the uh, of the people which are just identifying the frequent utterances and they are just adding adding them to the, to their lists. But uh, it is not uh, suitable for a small team to develop something like that, and you you don't want it uh, you don't want to do it uh, this way because. Uh, it, it's not it's not the fun you you need to come up with something something more elaborated so next uh, option is to use neural network to uh, 
to decide how the dialogue will be driven. And uh, the problem with the neural networks is that uh, they need a huge amount of data. And if you are developing your bot, you don't have any data because you don't have your bot because you are at the start, at the beginning of your, of your work. So how, how to solve this, this problem and how to gather your data before you actually deploy your bot and start to gathering real data from, from real people. We designed something we call uh, dialogue trees, uh, which are like uh, decision trees, but the nodes are not uh, not the strict examples uh, how how the bot should decide. We use those trees, which can which can look like uh, look like that, only to generate uh, data, which are then used as a training set for the neural networks. So basically, we we. Uh, design some uh, dialogues in a way we want uh, we want the bot to uh, to drive them and uh, based on the passages through those through those trees uh, we we generate a huge amount of data which are uh, which are helpful for training the neural networks and uh, the trees have uh, has several several levels or several types of uh, nodes uh, one kind of node is uh, the node where you, when you specify the messages you are expecting uh, from the users. And uh, because you are not using those, uh, those examples as, a, uh, as a something which is used to pattern matching, on, but you are using it to train your neural networks, you don't need to enumerate all of the possibilities. For example, if you, if you are expecting that a user says something like yes, you can uh, you can list a few examples uh, in in your list, and then the neural networks will will generalize it. And uh, even if some kind of close uh, close example to those you listed here uh, is uh, uttered into your bot, uh, it it should be mapped to this state, and uh, uh, and the decision uh, could be right. The second type of the of the node is uh, the actual utterance of, of the bot. You can uh, you can uh, include some uh, some links to external knowledge to include them into those templates, uh, and uh, you, know, you can uh, you can list the several options which can be which can be set in the same situation. And uh, of course, uh, still you need some kind of. Uh, some kind of rules based on based on information you uh, you found on the internet. For example, if you want to say something different uh, regarding the popularity of the film, you need to you need to write the code uh, which will decide that. And you have your dialogue designed, and uh, you now have uh, trained the neural network based on the data which are uh, which are artificial, but you have at least you have something uh, which you can build on and uh, this model is uh, can be easily easily deployed uh, to the users and then you you start uh, gathering the data from the users and because the data have the same nature as the data you gathered uh, you you uh, you generate it uh, from those trees you can you can trigger the process of the learning again and then you have your model fine tuned on the real data uh, and finally, you, ca you can even make some uh, some manual modifications, like uh, identification of the situations you were not expecting during during the design. As I said uh, at the beginning, uh, we we needed to identify the most crucial topics. So, uh, speaking of movies, we uh, we needed to develop a, a lot of uh, a lot of dialogues about. Uh, the actors, uh, uh, actors, directors, and stuff like that, and make them make them really funny because this is something which uh, which will happen in uh, almost all of the dialogues, uh, the the conversation about movies. So you need to uh, you need to really um, uh, invest your time in, into those parts uh, because it will give you the the better rating. And this is uh, for the other systems we we were developing. Uh, we are not limited to to use only the textual or the or the voice responses. Uh, we we used our system uh, even to develop some kind of 
video supported or image supported uh, voice assistants uh, where we where we did some kind of interactive movie which were uh, really short but it was uh, like a pr proof of concept of the technology that we can we can use the same approach uh, and only only to only add some additional additional information like image in, uh, image stuff and stuff like that and it, it is really it is really impressive as well uh, this is one one uh, one of the dialogue one of the biggest dialogues uh, just for the uh, illustration and uh, the technical part is one uh, one of the one of the parts of the con uh, of the developing the bot but uh, the conversational design is uh, uh, really important as well and uh, we we want to design the conversation uh, using uh, students which uh, are not uh, from the uh, from the technical area because they are they are better with uh, with the language and they they came uh, they usually uh, come up with the uh, better better ideas how the dialogue should look like from the language point of view so they are they need to they need to decide what the use what the bot uh, will be saying to the users and what the bot should be expecting uh, from the uh, from the users but uh, here comes uh, the hard part because uh, imagine the very simple questions like what's your favorite color and uh, the first uh, response you are expecting is something like my favorite color is red or something like that but users are usually not very um, cooperative so they can they can invent very uh, very various kind of responses and uh, you cannot uh, you cannot even imagine at, at the beginning of your development that something like that could uh, even come to your bot so you need to uh, you need to think big and uh, think of the of the possibilities which can which can be uh, uttered into your bot and uh, if you can see the the this red uh, the, uh, this red example then uh, users this is something the users uh, actually said to our bot that uh, which is something which is really not uh, related to anything so, and this is this is why this is because the users uh, don't talk to the bot uh, as uh, it, it is some human kind of being they know it is a bot and they act like that they want to they want to break it and they they are saying um, meaningless meaningless sentences so uh, after that your bot is uh, usually lost or if you if you if you are lucky you you send you respond with something like hey hey bro what are you talking about let's switch your topic and this is this is usually the best response you can provide to uh, bullshit like that <laughs> And uh, during the design of the conversation, you need to uh, you need to be aware of the process of, uh, of the natural language understanding. So so you need uh, you need to know that the, you are expecting some kind of entities to be included uh, in the sentences uh, in particular states. Uh, so basically, you you are you are designing based based on the entity type. You you want to design different uh, different uh, paths through your dialogues. Yeah, this is this is all the same. But uh, you can uh, you can easily you can easily write one response uh, in each in each state, and then you will end up with a dialogue which is which is the same uh, uh, for everyone and every time the dialogue is triggered then there are there are s the same the same responses and uh, this is really boring because uh, uh, usually usually people people are not returning to to our bot but uh, they are they are usually discussing the same thing, uh, multiple times during one conversation and they can uh, if they identify that you are repeating yourself they give you lower rating so you you need to come up with various kind of responses to make the bot uh, feel like uh, 
uh, he al always responds with uh, some uh, something different. And uh, if you uh, if you are comparing the conversation of the bot with the human to human conversation, humans usually uh, give uh, some kind of uh, responses that they are actually listening, they are nodding, or they are they are saying, "Oh yeah, I understand you." And uh, because uh, if you are developing your your bot on Alexa, you, uh, Alexa cannot nod, so you need to you need to invent some kind of uh, uh, voice. Uh, Paraphrasing or rephrasing acknowledgements. So if you uh, if you just uh, include something like uh, uh, like paraphrasing the last sentence of the of the user or just saying oh yes I understand you. Uh, this is something which is really helpful for dialogue design uh, because the user have uh, user have has the feeling that you actually uh, uh, listen uh, listen to them and. Uh, they are they are willing to keep the conversation going uh, if they are uh, if they are feeling entertained and uh, if you if you ever tried to uh, ask alexa or another device for something which uh, which has a really long response you may be encountered that the uh, that the prosody of the whole response is uh, is on I would say on one level, it's uh, it's really boring, and you can lost your focus on what uh, what the bot is saying uh, pretty easily. And uh, you can, uh, as a designer, uh, you can uh, add some prosody text to your to your responses when you can increase or decrease the pitch of the of the speech or the speed. And uh, uh, th this is something uh, which. Uh, users usually like to hear, as you hear in, in our demos, some kind of ooh la la and those uh, stuff like that. Uh, this is uh, really which uh, please your please your ear, and uh, you are you are happy that uh, the bot is not uh, monotonic and the bot is not talking in a robotic way. And uh, some ki uh, some kind of trick. Uh, which uh, one of our designer came up with is that even if you spell one of the words uh, uh, in a way it, uh, which is not uh, the right way, uh, it sounds better than if you spell it if you spell it correctly. Because the way how Alexa pronounced the the word is uh, is better better this way. But it is uh, this is something which is obviously not documented, and you you need to experiment with with those types of uh, of tricks. When the user uh, want to talk about uh, something like uh, when the user want to talk about uh, people or uh, specific person, then uh, the trick part is to uh, include. Uh, spe uh, gender specific pronouns in the in your in your responses in in the english it is uh, it is not so uh, not so important but when we are developing dialogues in czech and i believe in german would be similar uh, we have uh, we are encountering this problem uh, uh, almost in every sentence because we need to we need to be aware of the of the uh, gender uh, of the noun we are talking about, and uh, the, the simplest simplest uh, approach is just to avoid the formulation which needed which need need to specifically uh, use the gender specific uh, pronouns, but it is not always uh, possible. Those are for a few points uh, which are really important during the development. Uh, as I said, the context is uh, it, it should be underlined because uh, it is the most crucial part of every system. You need to uh, you need to remember what the user said earlier because uh, if you ask the same question uh, multiple times, then the user would be annoyed. Another thing is uh, to to be coherent. You cannot you cannot say that you like uh, you like Harry Potter in one sentence and then you hate Harry Potter in another sentence. Uh, 
you enter because when the user says something uh, which is an, like a difficult question or a more, more structured message, uh, the, the bots uh, can get uh, lost easily. So one, uh, one of the approach is to uh, guide, the, guide the users or uh, ask the users questions and they are, they are in the narrow field uh, of the communication and they are, they are usually responding, if they are cooperative, they are responding in the way you are expecting them to. But uh, either way, you, uh, you need to be prepared uh, on, the, on the situation when the user want to take, want, wants to take over the conversation and decide uh, that he wants to, wants to talk uh, about something uh, you are not uh, ready to. For example, one, one of the sentences uttered in the, during the final conversation last year was uh, from the woman you saw on the picture and uh, she said something like I was uh, at a cinema with my son and we, we went to see Avengers and he really didn't like the movie can you tell me why <laughs> and uh, we, we heard that conversation because we, we received recordings of uh, all the f all of our final conversations and we were like what the hell is that? How, how can we even respond to that? And uh, obviously the bot was uh, completely lost and uh, uh, uttered with some, with, some, uh, with some nonsense which was not, not closely related to, to movies, I guess. And uh, then it uh, went uh, like uh, the woman said uh, anything and uh, the conversation went on, but, but the interactor was, uh, was upset because it didn't respond like, uh, like she wanted, wanted to. Yeah, those are the points, uh, similar points as uh, in the previous slides. Uh, you need to focus on, uh, on personality to present your opinions because uh, imagine the conversation uh, between humans. Uh, you are not discussing uh, knowledge uh, like in a way it's stored in Wikipedia. You are not uh, you are not coming to another uh, another person and say, "Hey, did you know that uh, uh, Harry Potter uh, made uh, I don't know how how much million dollars?" And you you want to discuss something like, uh, "How did you like it?" And what was your opinion about the performance of of the specific actor? And uh, this is uh, something which is not obviously included uh, in any any of the database. So. Uh, so you need to you need to find a way how to present uh, opinions of, of the bot, and uh, the basic way is to uh, is to write some uh, write some opinions for some uh, uh, most occurring entities, but uh, you can you can do it only for few. The second approach uh, how to how to handle this uh, is to uh, measure sentiment of the entity and uh, we basically did this uh, we find the entity in a way that we find the entity uh, in a Twitter and then we measure the sentiment of the of the tweets and based on that we we said that we like it or we we did not like it uh, but it had several flaws you can you can only use it like for like or dislike or you cannot you cannot uh, came up with the specific uh, and concrete uh, opinion about the entity. And uh, because you are rated by the people, you need to be, you need to be friendly and funny and uh, you, uh, you don't want to offend an anyone because uh, I, saw one, I saw one rating that we offended someone and still we received five stars, but it was only, only exceptions. Uh, as we discussed uh, uh, last night, uh, uh, the relevance of the uh, of the rating is really speculative because uh, I always have the feeling that the people are rating it uh, like uh, giving the random numbers to our bot. <laughs> and uh, you need to be aware of the restriction of the technology you are using. 
you are uh, you are using those assistants like uh, they are pretty much the same all of them uh, they have some speech recognition flaws so you you need to be aware of for example if you are if you are expecting the uh, word 10 then uh, then you can easily receive the, from the speech recognition something like then ben zen or something like that and if you if you include those uh, as the examples you are expecting from the user, it will it will help you to mitigate the speech recognition errors because you are expecting the words which are not relevant but they are phonetically similar to the word you are actually expecting. And the second way is that the uh, uh, communication is only one way. It's a simplex. You can only talk to Alexa when uh, when she's listening. And when she starts to to speak, you are you are not able to tell you tell tell her anything except for the activation word, which uh, will just stop uh, stop her, uh, and she will start to listening to. And uh, the final final thing is that you are losing a lot of information because uh, uh, you are uh, not able to see the expression of the user and uh, even. Uh, more, you are not able to hear the voice from the legal restrictions. Uh, Amazon will provide you only with the uh, speech recognition results, and you are not receiving uh, uh, even the information about the prosody, about uh, about the mood, or uh, something like that. You are receiving the text and the probability of uh, individual tokens. And I guess uh, this is all from this presentation and. Uh, here you can find uh, more information about our journey during the Alexa Prize competition on the several uh, social networks. Thank you. So we have enough time for questions. some temporal model probably how long you install information about one of the contexts. Um, can you explain a little bit how long have you stored the temporal model? Okay the question was about how long we are storing the context and uh, we are working uh, with the context in two ways. One way is just to uh, strictly uh, store the information we are we are uh, recognizing during the uh, NLU part and we are we are putting into our database and those are the information which are stored uh, forever and we can we can even restore restore from the past conversation of the user based on the ID of the device we can uh, we can know that this is the conversation we had with the same we cannot tell that this is the same user, but we can tell this is the same device. So basically, it can be another me member of the family. And the second uh, uh, second way of the usage of, of the context is in those models of uh, the neural networks, because the neural networks are trained in a contextual way where the input is not only uh, the actual utterance, but it's a window of the uh, message response pairs and the windows has the length of 10, uh, 10 dialogue turns. So uh, you, you push the 10, uh, the window of the dialogue turns into your neural networks and based on that you receive the decision, this is the path of the, of the tree you want, to, you want to continue with. The question was about the personality and how it is connected to Alexa. And uh, our bot is something which is called the skill uh, on Alexa device. And uh, it is 
something uh, which which most of the people are not aware of it is a different world you start uh, the bot and you you entered uh, our application and you need to forget about the alexa at all and uh, you are talking about completely completely different personality so basically uh, each of the bot uh, in the competition have different personality and uh, this personality can be can be similar or, or cannot uh, to to Alexa, but it's only for, uh, on on the decision of the team uh, how how they will uh, implement the, this personality, and they they don't have any guidelines from Amazon that they need to be uh, they need to uh, have same opinions as Alexa has uh, or something like that. Can I ask that? Yeah. Yeah, voice is the same, but uh, the thing which is different is the uh, type of the of your of your responses and uh, your opinions uh, and the, the prosody how how you are presenting. If you are if you are a funny person or if you are serious person, if you have serious personality, uh, so uh, those are the differences you can you can you can make. You can. Uh, respond for, like for ev every every message with some kind of joke joke or you can you can present only the serious serious information yeah. and the, f the 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 funny style is the better for the for the rating of course <laughs> Thank you. yes a, a challenge i see with using like alexa a lot of these voice products is just for the user trying to understand sort of when is the system listening and versus when is it speaking and like sort of being able, and I can imagine especially for like the Alexa challenge, when you have these long back and forth conversations that can last 10, 15 minutes, um, it's inevitable. I could, I could think that, you know, the, that the uh, Alexa will cut the user off or the user will keep speaking thinking that Alexa is still listening to them. Um, so my question is, how do you deal with these types of situations where it's not always clear that the system is listening or, you know, the user isn't really, isn't, know completely sure whether it's heard everything that the user said okay the question was how to deal with the situations when the Alexa is talking when uh, when the user is talking and vice versa uh, we did not uh, we did not solve we did not even try to solve this problem during the competition but uh, in our uh, another another product or another projects we are trying to guide the people Hey, just uh, speak only if the light is on, or speak only if the light is uh, light is off, or stuff like that. But you don't want to uh, have these utterances in in your social bot because uh, they are they are boring and they can ruin your, the experience at the very beginning of the conversation. So basically, you are even not able to tell that uh, that Alexa interrupt uh, interrupt the user only only based uh, on based on the sentence which is like. Uh, like the rest of the sentence is missing, uh, and you can you can only guess that the the user was uh, was interrupted by Alexa, or it could be it could be another reason. Just uh, user can can pause in his speech, and and then Alexa stops listening, and then it starts responding with something like that. So basically, it's f it's for you uh, really hard to tell what happened. Uh, if if the utterance is uh, complete or whether whether it's not complete, you cannot really be sure. Yes, the question was how we how we can tell which uh, database to use during the conversation, and yes, it's basically based on the topics. You you are 
uh, you are recognizing the topics based on the entity mentioned in the in the utterance and then there are strict mappings if it's movie then use IMDB if it's uh, if it's music then use last FN and uh, additionally you can always uh, always include the information from Wikidata because uh, it includes uh, various types of information Yeah, the question was about the blacklist, how, how can we filter out the improper conversation. And uh, we started with the blacklist provided by the Amazon, which is uh, only some, f it includes only some words or couple or, or word phrases, which can be filtered out from the information you find on the internet. Uh, and because it's uh, not enough itself, we, we experimented with some neural models which were trained on a data set from Twitter where the tweets were labeled like uh, proper, neutral or positive or so something like that. And uh, this is something uh, which, uh, which, was really, which was, I would say, very good, but uh, in terms of the uh, evaluation of the model, but in terms of the usage uh, in, the, in the system, it, it usually does not help you at all because uh, uh, when the user says something which is really bad, it it is usually filtered out by the blacklist. And uh, if it's something something different, then the, this model cannot uh, cannot even even detect it. So basically, basically, this is uh, the problem of that the data from the Twitter are are different uh, is different than the data you are you are receiving from the users, and. Uh, if, if we have the capacity to uh, to label the conversations uh, which uh, which we are gathering uh, f from uh, from the dialogues uh, between a user and our bot, uh, that would be better. But uh, uh, we have only five people, so we don't want we don't want to spend so much time on labeling data. Yeah, the question was about the source of the information and uh, it's uh, simple in the way that we were provided with the Washington Post because it's uh, owned by Jeff Bezos. So they, they gave us the <laughs> API to use, uh, uh, to use this source and uh, it was the easiest way to, uh, to include some news information. So we, we went for it and uh, we ended up not using any other source for, for the news. And uh, for the other topics, we use uh, only one one database for for a topic plus the generic one such as Wikidata. Yeah, it's tricky uh, because uh, we are we are uh, presenting that uh, the no, the news are from Washington Post, so uh, you can easily ca encounter the people that they are unhappy with this source, so they they, <laughs> they will give you low rating eventually. <laughs> Yeah, the question was about evolving the personality of the bot and uh, 
the level of this system in uh, is uh, like this and something which has its own personality is like it's like there so we are we are not there uh, from a long perspective so basically the personality of the bot is something we uh, as a developers uh, gave it uh, gave into it and uh, the bot in has no no chance to uh, to change it and uh, because we are we are mm, we are uh, presenting the information from from the internet uh, in a way that uh, we we have some uh, uh, we have some uh, sentences before before it and after that which which uh, will uh, which will determine the actual personality and uh, then uh, then when the user says that he or she doesn't like the the information that we provided then we we can we usually say something like oh this is something I only only saw on the internet I don't know anything else about it so this is something we we throw the responsibility on someone else and and the actual personality of the bot is uh, only the something we we implemented into it. Uh, we don't have access to location of the user and I believe we are not able to ask about uh, the location uh, in more specific way than which uh, country the user is from. Um, maybe we can, we can ask about the city but we cannot be more, uh, more specific in these questions. This applies even for the age of the user and I believe we can we can ask for gender and that's all. Okay, um, well the, the reason I, I ask uh, was whether you can uh, you can let's say address and there's cultural differences. N it, we we did not do this because we did not wanted to uh, experiment with uh, what we are what we are allowed to ask about. So we uh, we completely we completely discard this idea, and uh, then you are not able to uh, to tell the weather to user because you are not you don't know uh, where he lives, uh, and you are limited uh, you are limited in in uh, I don't know in different fields like uh, if the user asks what is in cinema right now, then you you are presenting uh, like like the general. Uh, general movie list, which is uh, which could be which could be same all over the world, but you are not specific with the information uh, for the for the specific city or country. Yeah, but, uh, and, uh, these are the, the rules of the of the challenge. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the rules of the challenge are different than the rules of the uh, regular developer on Alexa. Uh, if you are a regular developer, you can even change the voice of the Alexa, or you can you can play in your custom sounds, and uh, you can ask uh, almost whatever you want, and this this should be included in in the terms of service uh, of your skill, and then then uh, I believe you are you are okay with uh, asking those questions. Yeah, Amazon would not be happy if uh, <laughs> if I share this information, but I I can I can <laughs> roughly <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah to round it up uh, during Christmas is uh, over one hundred thousand uh, turns per day. If we try to avoid uh, some uh, political or religion related uh, related responses like uh, to be more uh, to be more general we try to avoid everything which uh, which could be in conflict with the users uh, users opinions 
So you you don't want to you don't want to present that you are uh, democratic or you are repub a republican. You don't want to you don't want to have this conversation at all. So uh, basically, if you are uh, if we are detecting that we are uh, that the user want to trigger some uh, kind of political or religion related topic, we want to drive the conversation in another way because this is something we we don't want to discuss. Yeah, it's really difficult to react uh, in a specific way to some uh, uh, culture differences between users. And uh, I believe the specific, uh, the specific example you mentioned, <coughs> this is something uh, which our bot is not able to handle. I believe it will uh, end up with some uh, general response like, uh, I'm happy for your friend. And it will be the most, uh, m most uh, suitable response I, I can come up with with knowing the functionality of our bot, but it could, uh, it could even uh, uh, respond with some, some nonsense because it is, it is, uh, uh, it, it could not be easily mapped to any, any of those, uh, of those fields uh, where the, where the bot is, uh, uh, where the bot is uh, cap uh, capable of having conversation. But uh, the, I believe that the case which could have, could uh, happen really easily is uh, that it will it will detect the entity of I believe uh, Chinese New Year could, could be the entity of the uh, in this in this uh, message and then it will find some uh, uh, some fun fact on Reddit and then you are only hoping that this is this fun fact is not uh, it's not bad and it, it will hopefully uh, amuse the the user or and uh, he will not give you a bad rating. Yes, yeah, but you are uh, limited by the rules uh, in the usage of the jokes. You you are uh, encouraged to use uh, topic related jokes like you are discussing some kind of movie and then you can you can say, yeah, I heard this joke about this movie we are just now discussing and then you can tell the joke. But uh, they are, uh, they don't want uh, the bot to be like, uh, I can tell you a joke and then the bot tell you a joke and then I, do you want to do you want to hear another one? Something something like the singing, but uh, but uh, you can have this functionality if you don't advertise it uh, in the first place. If the if the user specifically wants to hear a joke, then you can tell him to uh, that you that you know another one, but uh, you you cannot offer him uh, the joke in the first place. Okay. So, so they so they don't want they don't want to. Yes, they, they want uh, us to develop some kind of conversation and they say that this, and they are, uh, they are right, this is not uh, the conversational part of the system, so they, uh, they don't want to include uh, quizzes, uh, jokes or stories or stuff like that. Do you have uh, any specific one in mind? Because it's not a very um, not kind when you're a similar subject by Amazon or whenever you use some uh, on premises network. Uh, okay. Uh, the thing about the neural networks, uh, basically, about the whole system, uh, we uh, don't use anything which is provided by the Amazon except for the, except for the uh, speech recognition and text to speech and their, their AWS services uh, only for hosting uh, uh, the computer instances. And basically all the machine learning we are developing uh, in TensorFlow and we are, uh, we are doing on our own. So uh, the process is uh, 
almost the same for every every subtask in the in the system. We we have we have some data, or we we start to gather some data, and then uh, then we uh, we have labeled set of data, and then we train the network for for example intent detection or entity recognition. Uh, for the dialogue management, this was the kind of network we trained on the generated data from the trees. And uh, every every model is a model developed uh, uh, in our team. And uh, we, yes, those models are, the architectures are inspired by the state-of-the-art models presented in the papers. But the code uh, is, uh, is always uh, from us and uh, it's not downloaded or provided by Amazon. Yes, this is something we are actually doing right now with uh, one of the partners. We are we are trying to. Uh, we already have uh, a service uh, like intent detection, and uh, uh, in these days we are trying to provide it to someone else uh, with some with some MP APIs where they can they can send us uh, the data and then we train the model and then we provide them with the API and they can. Uh, send a request uh, to the specific specific utterances. So yes, it is possible. But if you if you keep or if you store the clients' or partners' data, then there's probably a limit to the business model because they would give away information that is their business model and not yours. <laughs> uh, will that go on like this? What do you expect? Yes, the, the data privacy is always the issue, and uh, currently we have o only one client for that, which uh, provided us with the data which are not confidential. So we did not have to han uh, handle this yet, but I believe we will we will come to this issue very soon. And uh, because right now we don't have we don't have the um, on-premise solution like uh, we will give you the model and and then you can train your your own without providing us with the data this is something we i believe we will not be doing uh, in uh, anytime soon but may maybe it will be necessary in the future so there yes. will be for a long time no less i my worst paper about that stuff because <laughs> 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 yeah learn amazon would not be the partner of um a hardware store like Lots of children in in Dresden and Tabula because they get the data. What are people asking for? And then Amazon, of course, would store it to uh, um, yes. produce its own advertisement. <laughs> Even yeah. counteract then uh, Alexa's uh, output uh, by adding more information about their hardware. Store yeah, this is this is for another discussion because. Uh, those companies could uh, have become like a big brother who knows everything because uh, everyone has its own device at home in the future and uh, uh, you you can tell tell to it uh, like everything and they will know anything about you and based on that it will uh, the harmless thing is uh, I guess the advertisement but then then you can uh, then, then it can like uh, be used for some political campaigns and stuff like that because it knows the information about you, and uh, this is something which uh, which could uh, have gone really bad. And uh, I hope uh, it will not happen, but we need to be aware of this problem. What do you think? What was the reason for uh, Amazon not to provide the uh, the original utterances? What do you think? They said this is the legal issue. Not they were not just they they were not more specific, and uh, I guess they don't want to uh, provide us with the with the actual voice of the user. So so we don't uh, we are not able to hear uh, yeah. uh, spe specific specific voices because uh, it is it is in a way a personal information okay. uh, which the users won't, don't want to share with another people. 
there's a difference if what, uh, 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 somebody will say uh, a utterance in a, in a friendly or in a completely uh, aggressive manner. Yeah, I guess it would be enough for us if we received some kind of uh, labels like uh, this is friendly, this is aggressive, uh, or, or some more fine-grained scale for that. Mm, because if we are provided with the actual voice, uh, it will introduce for us additional work how to handle uh, the voice. And we have not worked uh, yet with the voice itself. We always we are always working with the text, mm -hmm. so uh, we are not uh, we don't have expertise in that field. Thank you. Ready? <laughs> okay. Now there are more questions. Okay. Thank you very much for your interesting talk. Thank you.